this is a part of our Summer Artist Series. So it's our way of continuing to bring you all exciting and really just entertaining and fun experiences from some talented and creative alumni. My name is Kim Edwards, and I'm one of the art and culture co-chairs here at the UVA Alumni Board in Washington, DC. And our guest this evening, which I am honored and delighted to see, is Uzo Ujanku, and she is based in the DMV area. She's featured in articles. She has collections literally around the world. Um, and she is spending this evening with us to share just some of her insights, um, some techniques, and I will definitely say looking at her work, her art is not only visually stunning, but it has a lot of West African infused themes, strategic figures, and just really vibrant colors. So definitely a warm welcome to Uzo. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, I definitely think that some of us know a little bit about your history and about your background. Um, some of us that maybe graduated a little bit more recently, but I think there are others that you are a new face or maybe they've seen your art but didn't know who was behind the art. Um, so I think it would be great if we could tell just some of the guests what got you started and how you shifted your focus and really be, began fueling the new passion in painting. Okay. Um, I originally came to UVA to study statistics. Um, I come from a very STEM heavy background with my family and everything. And I kind of struggled a bit because there were kids in the class who you could tell loved what they were doing and I necessarily didn't love what I was doing. Um, so I took a year off and I had an apartment in Charlottesville and I would just paint like do copies of like art that I saw online and I would post it and people were like, oh, this is great, this is great. And I was like, okay, maybe this is something I can do. And I just um, kept going at it. And then eventually I joined the art program and it just, it didn't even feel like I was in school anymore. It just felt like I was doing something that, that I loved. That's great to hear. Um, I think that for some people it happens in school and some people after school. So I love that you kind of realize early enough and were able to make that pivot, so to speak, to really follow what you really enjoy and are obviously very talented in doing. Um, so in regards to your life experiences and what brings you joy and happiness, um, do you feel that the painting is really kind of your way to express yourself to the world? Um, are, are there other ways that you show and express yourself creatively? I realized that along the way that I'm very, I'm a very, I'm a visual learner. I learn by looking at things visually, colors, things like that. And I'm not the best writer. I'm not the best at other things, but I think when it comes to painting or just creating, putting images out, um, I do feel that it's my way of sort of telling a story and shedding light on any issues or just capturing emotions and things like that. Yeah, I definitely can understand that. Um, I, I like that you said capturing and maybe taking on or battling some of the issues that either might be in the world or in your own kind of community. Um, I noticed that you paint pictures um, of women, especially that I would say exude the power and autonomy and kind of security, I would say, in a way that maybe synthesizes you and your identity. Would you say that's an accurate statement? Yes. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit more about how maybe you create or design these images, knowing that you want to have a, a female depiction in that light and have that strong woman presented. Okay. Um, when I first started off with the classes I took at UVA, I took a lot of um, high Renaissance um, art history classes, and I just always noticed how most of the subject, most of the subjects were women, but most of the artists were men. You know, and the issue is it's not an issue and stuff, but most of the time when it is under the male gaze, they are depicted a different way. They're a little bit more subjective. Their gaze is lowered. They're a little bit turned away. Like they're very. Um, you're very mute in a way. 
and so and then it was you typically always lighter flesh against darker backgrounds and so kind of during my um college career it was trying to find a way to have vibrant colors but having that contrast so working with darker flesh against um bright backgrounds and just kind of having now having these women especially me being a woman myself creating women in more um powerful poses even if they are um, naked there's, there's a difference between being in the nude and being naked and just kind of having them in more powerful poses and so um that's kind of my how i approached this along the way mm -hmm. i love how you phrase that the difference between being nude and naked and the perception that you want to um provide for the onlooker or for the the consumer so to speak um, I think your work really expresses almost just humanity in such a way that makes any onlooker stop and have to stare. Uh, it sounds like it's very purposeful, that contrast that you were speaking of. Uh, women are kind of held in almost like a regal space, both visually and emotionally, I think, through your work. And are there any specific emotions that you want to elicit from someone that's going to look at your painting or maybe purchase your painting? I think the emotion I just want you to do, I think the main thing is as long as it captures you and makes you stare a bit, just, it's not just a glance, like it makes you stop and just look a little bit longer that I feel like I have achieved a goal in a way. Because then I've had many different people send me just different prose that they've written just based off the work which is good like it, and it's always different directions and things like that is what I do enjoy about being an artist that's great and I can't imagine hearing from other artists I'm sure that makes you feel good to see that they're you know taking something away from your art the same as maybe a consumer would or you know someone like me that just really enjoys interesting work and what you're doing and the direction that it looks like you're going in um, I feel that your paintings have a lot of depth and color, like you said, that's purposeful. Um, the figures that you're creating have sharp lines. They are um, bold in their positioning. Um, like we said, kind of like that power and that poise, maybe. Um, your work challenges that notion of what is feminine? What is femininity on a canvas? And your work, I would say, kind of amplifies the, the topic and the notion that you can be different and you can have layers and you can have that, um, the term I like to use is that intersectionality, right? The layering of different components and different identities of who you are. Talking a little bit about your past, um, would you like to tell the audience kind of how you integrate your Nigerian roots and the American experiences that you've had here um, in your work? Mm -hmm. um, I came, I moved to America when I was seven. So, and I do try to visit as often as I can back home. Um, and I do spend a lot of time studying. I am Nigerian, Nigerian history. And before um, the influence of colonization, the patriarchy was definitely different. Um, women were held a little bit more at a higher standard. Um, they were usually the breadwinners in the house. And then we would have huge groups like the Umuada United Groups, which were all ran by women and they would handle domestic issues going on in communities and things like that. And to now taking that um, with that and then taking issues that are going on in, with, um, in America, just trying to create a contemporary a contemporary woman, you know, that still is instilling those type of traditions that I um, that I know of, but also kind of still placing her in a newer, newer dimension, a newer space, you know, um, because as time goes on, there's going to be different challenges along the way. But at the end of the day, we are who we are. Who we are. Exactly, exactly. And I think it's interesting and it's great for people to know that history behind your pieces um, and that influence, right, that that plays a factor and is woven into each piece, really. I think that um, for onlookers, that Nigerian root is definitely present in your work. Um, and as it continues, I think it makes people want to 
always know what's coming up next and what is she going to paint? What is she going to create? Um, I know that you have some things in the works and we won't speak to that. We'll, we'll wait and find out. Um, but you have a huge collection um, of work. Would you speak to the audience about some of the different um, pieces of work and art that you've created? Um, there are some key pieces I've made, but I always feel like my style is constantly evolving. I think the main thing about being an artist is being open to the idea of your work changing over time um but one key one was just something called um when life gives you oranges yeah. um, and it kind of touches upon um agriculture and communities like if i wasn't an artist i'll probably be a farmer an orange farmer you know have orange gr uh, groves and um it also speaks more into just kind of um when you start th talking about like food blocks and things going on in communities and um, impoverished areas. Um, I think it just speaks a little bit more to like more issues going on, but at the end of the day, it's still it such a, a compelling piece to look at with the oranges in the hands. Um, do you want me to say one more piece or is that good enough? Oh, I will not stop you. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess I'll talk in an older piece. One of the older one of the older pieces I have is called Things Fall Apart. And um, it's a woman, um, I mean, it's a woman, but some people, um, you, it's a woman that it's not necessarily, she has the features of saying that's a woman, you know, her hair is not long, anything like that, but she does have a very strong gaze and her hand is placed over a book, one of my favorite books, Things Fall Apart by mm -hmm. Chinua Achebe. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that that book was shown because I think I think once in your life you should at least pick up the book and read it. I agree. Um, I don't know if you're seeing the audience, but when you mentioned that piece, I saw a lot of head nods. <laughs> I think there are a lot of people that um, maybe have their own favorites of yours. So it's great to hear about that. Uh, you spoke a little bit about the industries and about how the things that are going on in the world not only affect you personally, but artistically as well. How do you feel um, art really factors in and plays a part, so to speak, in society, especially as times change? Um, I think there are two kind of artists. There are artists who sort of try to just capture beauty in the world, regardless of what's going on, which is what I fall under. And then there are artists who are social artists. Um, the social artist doesn't just um, stay with just um, creating painting. It can be photography, it can be performing arts, it can be a lot of things as you can see going on in the media as you can see. Um, and I think both of them are very beneficial to how things play out and pan out, you know, because people do take art differently. They still want to see the performance part and things that do address issues directly. And then they still want to be able to go home or be home and be able to just see something that maybe times will be better eventually and things going on. Thank you for that. Um, and especially that distinction between the two types of artists. Um, I do have a question. Despite that response, if you personally, feel that um, the industry is changing, the art industry is changing in response to the Black Lives Matter protests and movement. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I will say that because of the Black Lives Matter, there is um, more of a gaze, a stronger gaze onto um, Black, Black artists, but um, Black artists, but also minority artists as well. So it doesn't just, um, it's not just um, Black artists. And then, I also noticed that generally um, as an artist to get any type of funding or anything pertaining to arts, they have a lot of regulations. And one of the bigger, biggest guidelines is you have to be a professional artist. And that means um, a minimum, you have to show that for a minimum of 10 years, you have been doing art. And the main people who would need some kind of guidance to even start creating are people around my age group who are younger and there's no way we've been creating for that long. And so I do find that now with the Black Lives Matter movement, there is more attention to funding for younger artists, um, which is definitely benefiting a lot to getting things out faster. Um, and I also, and this also, 
a little bit more of acceptance on the digital sphere of art because usually it's frowned upon, but it's not being accepted more because it's a way to be able to reach people faster since to seeing art being created and things like that. Yeah, um, that actually leads into another question I have that I'll jump to the digital world. Um, I know that it's something that you have worked in and you also help other artists in that regard with um, different ways of either volunteering your time or expertise or even just tangible items, right? Uh, I think the audience would really love to hear what work you've done or even pre-work in a way using mm -hmm. the digital platform. Yes. Um, so when I graduated from UVA, I didn't really have a plan. I knew I wanted to do an M a master's program, but I wasn't sure when it was going to happen. And so I moved to DC, which is kind of expensive. And I realized that, okay, I'm paying for an apartment, but I don't have a studio space because I paint with oils. And so for months I didn't create or I didn't create and it really hurt. Um, so eventually I was doing odd jobs like Nanny and I saved up money to buy an iPad. I was like, okay, let me, let me work with a digital surface. Let me try, since I don't have a studio at the time, let me try doing something digitally. And so, I, used, I remember I used all my money in my account that day, bought an iPad, and um, it was just crazy. Um, and I was able to just play around, play around with it some more. Um, I was able to also invest my time into learning how to use Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop. And in doing that, I realized there were a lot of benefits to understanding how to be, um, how to use the digital scope of art. Because for example, let's say you take a, let's say you paint a piece. A lot of people, you sell one piece, but there's still gonna be a lot of people who want those pieces, right? You cannot simply take a picture of it and then print it because it's not gonna be the same. And so the wonderful thing about being able to now upload onto digital devices is that you can now make, I can make tweaks to it to make sure that the color and everything is the exact same as the original as well. And so that played, um, that played a big part also understanding dimensions, um, DPI, just like all the technical things to make sure that what you create can now be translated onto multiple surfaces as well. I can now, as if anyone has ever you've been on my website, I have artwork on mugs, I have it on t-shirts, I have it on candles, I have it on a lot of products, which I feel would not have been able to be happen without um, digital products. And I do understand that as well. And as I've made money along the way, I have given out some iPads to other artists who I feel that this might be able to help them take things to the next step. Because at the end of the day, you can't really, unless you're a big artist, you cannot really live off just selling originals. You know, you have to find ways to be able to make money as well. And so the business aspect of it and knowing how to create now products from your art, because product design is a big thing and kind of understanding that you're an artist, but you can also create products as well is a big thing. So, yeah. Thank you for that. I think it's, it's something like you said, we've seen on your website, but I know for myself, I always wonder how you determine what the next product is. You know, is it a product that people seek you out and maybe by commission and so you end up going that route or is it sometimes a product that you want? Um, I know I saw your, your soy candles, which I love. And uh -huh. In my mind, I was like, this must be something she wanted. And so everyone else is going to benefit from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes it's uh, someone, sometimes if someone comes to me, like right now, people are asking me to make um, laptop covers. And it's very expensive to get it done right now. So right now I am working on trying to figure out what's the best way to make this done. So that's, that's someone coming to me. Um, but most of the time, sometimes it's just, I'll see something online and I'll be like, that would be really cool if I had like a more of my kind of design approach to it. And that's kind of how I go about it. Thank you for sharing that. It hurts my heart that the laptop cover is difficult. <laughs> I'm waiting to see it's definitely, there were, I think where does the world is a way. Right, right. That determination factor. Um, I want to dial back a little bit and talk a little about um, your coloring book. I know that it's something that is is and was very much a passion of yours. And I think people would like to know kind of how you ended up, you know, creating that and so quickly, might I say. Yeah. Um, 
that what summer was that i think it was summer 2018 yes so all my friends were in graduate class 2018 and i'm now a year back because i took a year off and so all my friends are graduating i'm now still a uva and my summer didn't go as planned. I ended up working at the Boar's Head, uh, the Boar's Head Sports Club, mm-hmm. and I had I was a I was working at the front desk, and I was just like I always knew I wanted to do a coloring book. I wasn't sure what the approach was. I had no idea what was going to be on. I just had an idea. I wanted to make a book, and so I said, okay, I'm going to give myself a month to just create a coloring book. I have a- ample time <laughs> this summer. I'm just going to give myself that. So I posted about it. I was like, I'm going to make a coloring book, you know? And then as I'm making this coloring book, I realized that I don't have the money for it because then I had to do research on self-publishing, understanding how to pay for ISBN, um, copyright, the books, where am I going to get it made? So it was a lot of research on my part in creating. And I said, okay, let me put it on pre-order. And I remember that on um, the first two days we had, a, like, I think I had almost a thousand orders that day uh, when it happened. Um, I'm, I, I can never say I'm the best at marketing. I don't know how it happens, but I do believe in the power of um, the words of like mouth to mouth, like, you know, how things are passed on and things like that. Um, and so then I said, okay, so now I'm selling it online. How do I also get into physical things? And I just took my book in my hand and I walked all over downtown Charlottesville into like little bookstores and I think you should put my book in your bookstore. I think, you know, and so we got it into, um, we got into a few bookstores. Um, we actually got into also the, the trickiest one was getting into the UVA bookstores. Cause there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of files and things and like checks and balance checks and things you have to go through to be able to get products. in. so that was like the hardest one. Um, so we were able to get it down. I would also bring my table down with my artwork and I'll just put it right down um, in like Main Street and I'll just have my books and then I'll just sell it and have like my cash box and did, th- did it that way starting off. And then um, eventually I started selling at the VMFA and different museums because it was like Barnes Noble is too, like I didn't know how to, I didn't know it was just too much. So I said, okay museums museums have bookstores and those books don't necessarily have to be books you read they can be different types of books and so i was like okay maybe a book maybe they would like a book and so that's why i started teaching myself about wholesale consignment and um i had a friend who worked for um nbc 19 for like charlottesville and so she was like oh i should do um you should do a interview with us and ever since then it just kind of went from there and I started selling internationally and yeah. Well, that is amazing. And I've heard the story and I feel like I just learned even more through you retelling it. So I appreciate that. Um, for those that haven't seen, I did purchase your coloring book. I already had it, but I got a brand new one for <laughs> this evening. Um, I would love to talk a little bit. I won't show everything because I do think people should get there. Um, but I thought it was really interesting that you have so many, once again, strong figures in your coloring book. Um, you have figures that are not only like scholarly, but have determination and grit. Um, how did you decide who was going to make the book? Um, so in the beginning, it's just kind of just capturing just different apps, um, aspects of femininity. Some people think feminism is just being that, oh, she's wants to be in the workforce, she wants to be in debt, but it can literally just be taking care of your household, taking care of kids, um, being a cook, cooking in the house. It can be anything, anything that basically makes you happy. And so grad, graduating, just trying to capture as many different aspects as, as I could, different um, cultures. Um, you can see um, some different religious, um, religious, uh, religion sorry i can't speak right now I'm about, uh, religions um, so just trying to capture that and then it came down to what women should i put now that you should read about that you should know about you know so i tried to think about it more timeline wise um and also here in america and internationally who i feel like were important in the political aspect in media in the art world um and different things so i felt that that way by categorizing things, help me touch different things in the athletic world. Um, and yeah, I think 
yeah, I think that was the that was pretty much how I um I approached it and just kind of having like little excerpts on um domestic violence on it and just um the suicide prevention and things like that. Yes, you are taking all my questions. I actually had some flags, so I, I won't go through them. But yes, I found that it was um, a bold move. So kudos to you for putting a lot of um, political individuals, a lot of strong artistic individuals, and individuals that I think demonstrate the vast, beautiful nuances of what a woman is and who a woman is. Um, we have people that are from the 60s, from the 90s, um, and those that are from just a few years ago. So I think that's fantastic um, that it's not only a great way to kind of reflect um, and to kind of like center yourself, but also learn a little bit too. Mm -hmm. So I, I think everyone should really get that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we talked a little bit about the reach that you have that is not only domestic, but international. Are there any galleries or museums that you desire to have your work showcased in? Mm -hmm. Because I did, um, my last semester, I decided to go to London and um, spend my last semester at University of Arts London. And it actually did push my direction and like, it, it was the catalyst for me even approaching different mediums as well because when I went there um I just came in as a painter I would only paint on canvas and they said that you can't do that and I was like why not you have to approach the concept you want with as many different mediums as you can you know and with with that said um that that was a great program I joined. Um, I would also walk around London, look at different galleries and things like that. So, what I do I have a specific gallery I want to show at? Yes. Do I have one? I think I I think mine the one I want to show in is um is actually just in America. I want to show at the Metropolitan Museum. Um, I think that would be great because um. Like London is known as the financial district of the world. And I feel like New York is known as one of like the art districts. And so if you wanna come and see art, you will come to New York. And I feel like that's where I feel like I can really capture, get the most, the, the different variety of people as I can in that one city. Yes, I, I agree. And I think those would travel, those that already know you and those that don't would definitely travel to see your work there. Um, so definitely don't undersell yourself from your lips to God's ears. It's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. um, I think that I definitely have other questions that I find interesting, but I want to um, let the group know if you put your questions in the chat, um, I'll definitely answer as many as possible during our time this evening. Um, but I definitely want to continue our discussion about just everything that you're doing and moving forward. Um, I know that you spoke to some of the, the pieces that really spoke to you. Um, have you ever had someone approach you or maybe message you how they felt about your work, maybe a, a memorable reaction to your work? Um, yeah, I've had two different direct, um, reactions of just seeing it and actually purchasing and getting the work. Um, and it's just, um, some people just feel really moved because everyone does go through their struggles. And then just sometimes you do see that one work that kind of just speaks to everything going on right now. Um, so I want to share because a, a lot of the things they tell me are very personal, um, but it is nice hearing that. And then also um, with creating art that's accessible, you know, because as we go along this journey, um, I don't want to ever be like the artists that are up there that the only way to see their stuff is through galleries. And not everyone has the money or access to get up there. Um, and so just creating prints that a normal, per a normal person sh um, should be able to afford. And I've had like people like, I think like one lady, she was in her 60s and she was like thank you thank you so much this is my first time ever owning art that i actually like seek to find and have it and she frame it and they'll just have like little sanctuaries that they create in the in their house like with just art, the art there and i think it's really beautiful wow that is fantastic um i definitely can understand i think that was something that 
a lot of us would agree that making it attainable and also affordable um, and of course, there's pieces that, you know, it's kind of like your reach goal, right? Um, eventually you can afford it. But I think having a piece of work in your home or maybe in your office that it truly is beautiful and captures the essence of femininity is great. And you allow those um, to have access to that. Do you feel that um, there's anything that has changed or maybe found some new inspiration through this quarantine time specifically that's kind of changed your creative process? Mm, it's kind of hard now. It's not hard. It's just I barely have any time to create. And so um, I would say business is going really well right now. So it's just kind of balance, trying to balance that and then still being able to create. But um, as but what actually has happened with COVID was kind of just understanding how it's very important for me to do well so that I can be able to give back and create more, um, just more opportunities for other artists, you know, because my journey was not easy, you know, just like people being able, when you tell people, oh, I'm an artist, there's always, there's usually sometimes a very, um, like they look down, like they look down on you. And so just being able to like create uh, opportunities. So you know that yes, like there is opportunities in art. There's a lot of things you can do with art. Um, it's very beneficial to communities and things like that. Mm -hmm. That, um, I love your response. I know you and I have talked offline. So I'm gonna ask this question so the group can hear your response. Um, what advice would you give incoming students that really want their voice and their art to be heard and seen? Um, or just even a way to develop their art in, in the way that you have? Um, I will say the first thing, I'll say something technical. You should have at least three of your favorite artists. You know, it can be for how they handled, how they handled, like how they became into the art world, like their CV. Like for some artists, I have artists like who I look at, like Injadeka Crosby, I love her CV. And I felt that that's what I want to relate to. And then there are artists who you just love, love something technical about it. My favorite artist in terms of color scheme is David Hockney. And it's actually David Hockney in his later times when he just got a little bit more, it got more colorful and more dynamic and more in the landscape, in the landscape sense. And so I think it's important to go from there. Like once you have an artist, you can play around with their kind of concepts. It can be in your way or any way, so there's that. Um, and just starting off, don't just do what you are given in school, you know? Like that's, there's that, that's classwork. I call that classwork. You get homework, but you need to also create your own homework. And that includes research and things like that, holding yourself at a higher grade because you can't just you can't just assume that an institution is going to create everything for you. You know, there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of opportunities you, you're not going to know through a school. You're going to have to know through research and things like that. And I feel like that can definitely help propel a starting student into where they want to, where they want to go along their journey. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like you're preaching to like the young aspiring artists right now. Um, and I hope that they're all listening because these are really good nuggets of not only practical advice, but also, some emotional advice that, you know, it's going to be harder and not just the actual application of creating your art. Some of that background information and knowledge and those nuances are just as critical. Um, I know that you want to continue to provide this outlet and somewhat be a, a mentor, so to speak, for artists and aspiring artists. How do you approach mentorship in the art world um, now? um like right now i wouldn't say i can call myself a mentor because i am still i will say i'm still trying i haven't i haven't said that i'm there yet to say okay i can help anybody out i'm not there yet but i am working on it um i do wish that when i was younger starting off there was an artist that was tangible for me to reach out to that you know that was tangible um and it, i didn't have that so just making sure that along my way that I'm still being able to create some sort of access that you can shoot me an email and I can be able to respond. Um, I have gotten a lot of emails and I've been able to help as much as I can. Most of it is all, also based off um, research. Um, and yeah, and then I always tell them, if you're in an institution right now studying art, 
please take something that, um, that helps you understand administration, which, which is arts administration. I took it at UVA with um, George Sampson. I don't know if anyone knows who that is, but he's great. Um, because it's one thing to be create the art, but you have to understand what makes, what even gives you the opportunities to be able to show at galleries, to be able to show at events and things like that. And if you don't understand that, that's how you, a lot of artists end up being exploited and things like that, you know. Um, you create the artwork, but you have to understand the business behind it and so what makes your art being able to sell and things like that. Yeah, that, that's advice. It's real, too. Unfortunately, we've seen that. Um, to especially young artists or artists that are international, um, the exploitation. You mentioned being accessible, uh, receiving lots of emails, which to warn you, you probably will after this also. Um, but how do you balance that emotional side and really taking care of yourself so you can still have that creative lens while also investing in others? Honestly, I think I finally came to that because I was stressed before. I was actually really stressed until like recently. Um, I kind of learned along my way that it's good. It's okay to know when to delegate tasks. I can't do everything by myself. If I, I now have interns, I have some UVA students that are actually interns for me. I'm working and being able to give them tasks to handle gives me more peace of mind because now I trust them to handle some aspects and then I can focus on um, creating art and then also at a certain time I just close close down all my computers I just close it all down I don't see anything and just know when to when to just read and just focus on yourself because you can't create art if you're not happy I mean you can create art if you're sad but it's just like I'm I'm a happy I like to be happy and in a good space when I create and do things I definitely understand that. I think about our um, our pre-chat yesterday. I think both of us were a little frazzled and like we need to calm, be just one with one another and let the conversation flow. Um, so I, I definitely understand how sometimes the outside influences can kind of um, unfortunately sway your creative mind and getting things going. But um, I want to shift gears slightly. I have one question I think is very interesting. Um, one of the people asked, um, during your time at UVA and when you switched your focus and your um, major, how did your family support that decision? Um, as, as much as you feel comfortable sharing and um, any advice that you would give someone that it's kind of in that same boat um, that, you know, based on either um, generational or cultural differences, shifting from a more STEM or, or medical or you know, streamlined career into the liberal arts field? It was a struggle, you know. Um, I didn't talk to them for months. Um, they wanted to just pull me out to school and everything. Um, but then I kind of, as time passed, I understood kind of their con concerns, um, especially having immigrant parents, they come to this country and they want you to be in fields that they know when you leave, when you graduate, you will have a job ready, you know. And art is not something that they really per se um, know about. So I will say that if you want to do something that is not conventional and within your family, you have to be the best that you can. And you just have to go all out. Like you have to show them like, and the thing is that I'm doing a field that they don't really know about. So I had to create goals in mind to say that, okay, I want to, I want to get an MFA. What will, M what will a master's in fine arts do for me? X, 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 et cetera, et cetera, and just being open about what I'm trying to do and my goals for it to kind of show them that, okay, I still have a plan. I'm still cohe cohesive about everything going on. And so that's kind of my advice to them because parents, is, is, they're still going to react a different way. You just have to kind of be level-headed and just, just stick it out and just show that what you have, what you want to do makes sense and let, let, it, make, let it make sense, you know? Mm -hmm. That... That is very true. And thank you for your transparency with that response. Um, I, I could see in your face that you're reluctant to answer. So I appreciate that. Um, one question that I think is, is interesting. Um, in previous interviews, you've spoken to, in the beginning, you used to paint for yourself. Uh, do you still paint for yourself? Do you have artwork that's just for you in your home? Um. No, <laughs> artwork. Um, 
Because I have, um, oh, I do have one more. I do have one artwork that I actually refused to sell. And it was, um, it was actually my largest piece ever. Um, it's four feet by eight feet. It was the, um, I had two UVA students model for it. And I just keep it like what I've done actually, because what am I doing lugging an eight foot paint? And I actually just give to friends and I will loan it to them. They can hang it in their house for until they move to a new place and then I move it on to a different friend. And so it's kind of just, it's been like, it's been a traveling painting so far. I don't have it, but um, it's kind of weird. I create all this art, but then the, my walls are usually beer. <laughs> well, that is a very cool, actually. Um, it sounds like it's some, I don't know, a movie almost. It actually makes me think about um, the circle of artists or circle of friends maybe. Would you have any recommendations to new artists, maybe, to get connected to people in the area, or even um, the from, artists? Yeah, I don't like. I actually um, I made a Twitter like a year ago, and I've started to notice that there's actually like a community of artists that I actually didn't know about, and I think it's like specific to age group. Um, but for like speaking, like, because not everyone has like. I'm, I'm not saying to go on social media and try and find this group. Um, I would say to find other artists, um, just look in your area. There's a lot of community. There's a lot of um, events, like art events going on that they have. Uh, sometimes some areas have art residencies. Like it wasn't until I literally looked art stuff in Charlottesville that I knew about. They had artist residencies. They had all these other things. And Charlottesville is, it's a small, it's, it's not, it's, a, it's not a big town, you know? So for them to already have that much, imagine what is in your town, you know, at there. Um, it's very good to also go to some gallery events because those gallery events that you go to, um, you, you will meet people, you know, you will talk about art, you'll talk about things that are like-mindedness and that's kind of how you introduce yourself and so forth. I do know a lot of people have been created um, catalogs, like artist catalogs, so that we're able to look at people's arts and kind of see them and know how to, con how to connect to them. I don't really know much in that, but I do know I've seen a lot of people doing that lately. Wow, that's actually a great idea, especially, you know, during these times where people are at home for the most part, so they, they can really connect more genuinely, kind of yeah. like this evening to, to other people that may not be in close proximity. Yes. Um, I definitely want to ask you, um, what word would you use to describe your work? I have a word in my mind, um, but I would like to hear from you. Um, how would you describe your work? Um, I would say high contrast, um, colorful, and strong i think this would be like the three words it's kind of like what the emotions and visually i'm trying to capture i think so too i was gonna say intentional because i feel like everything that you do when i look at your your work is it's intentional it has a meaning it has a layer there's some sort of story i almost feel like that comes with the paintings um so definitely thank you for that um, I want to ask if there are any other questions in the group. I don't want to monopolize the questions. Um, anything that you want to share? I do think that they would find it interesting where your um, studio is because it actually is close to the area. Um, so I have a studio right now. I am at DC Art Studio, which is, I'm not really good on knowing seeing where in DC it is, but it is in Tacoma Park, um, DC, off Georgia Avenue, if that helps in a sense. Um, but I can always send Kim the address, um, and I can like. I think you just have to let me know in time, and then we can meet up. And I can, I can't. What I can't show what I'm working on right now because the reveal is going to be at the end of the year. But yeah. Yes, and you know that question came in about four times, and I had to kind of feel that. It's like, I know, I know people want to know, but... Yeah, it's, um, because I'm working on not, um, so the next works I'm working on is, um, it's an actual collection, and I typically allow a year of going into galleries before I even start selling, so right now it's actually, I think with the press I've been getting lately, we even have 
celebrities trying to see this works. I'm really like, wait, guys, this like it doesn't make you any different from anyone else. It's all calm down. Let me create what I need to create. And then when I reveal it, when my when the art dealers I deal with reveal it, then we'll slowly go from there because I do still have to follow timelines. That is great. Um, I feel like we're among those that are like crying for your time and your attention. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> for giving it to UVA. Um, that is fantastic. Um, I know that you had some information uh, just for those watching. I'll put it in the chat, um, your web address, um, the direct link, and also um, just a little clip of, about you that you've done in the past for those that um, this is their first time meeting you. So I'll put that in the chat. Um, any advice that you would like to give those that want to purchase some of your art? Um, one of the questions was, how do they get your art? Oh, um, so you can just buy it on my website of um, uzoart.com. It's just uzoarts.com. Um, I have worked on that website so many times that I just hope that it is as clean, as straightforward as I can. Um, there's a lot of time invested on that website. So um, yeah, you can just um, go through there. The all originals are, are sold. The next time I do sell originals will be next year. And I don't even sell it myself. It goes through um, the art dealers I work with and so forth. But I, um, I think it's a mailing list. Just email me and I can add you to his mailing list. That's great to hear. Um, well, we definitely will stay posted and kind of stay on the lookout for your website and social media to find out when that new collection comes out. Um, and hopefully we can, we can chat again after that reveal. I'm sure that'll be a fun time. Um, I do, I guess I've got to have some products on hand that I've made. Um, so so uh, this is the most recent one. So I made um, candles. Um, I made candles and a big thing for me was like going all out, um, creating a design for the box. So this is the candle box I created. I don't know if you can see it in the light. Oh yes, that's gorgeous. And so I was able to put some artwork on it and then inside it is a candle. So this is like one of the different candles that we have. I had to teach myself how to make candles and I had to teach everyone else how to make candles, but we did it, you know, we did it. We had a commercial, it was great. Um, so that's what I've done. I put artwork on lighters for the candles as well. Oh, wow. And, um, it comes with, I don't have it right now, but those are some, those are like the things I have closest to me to grab. So, I mean, oh, I appreciate that. I was, you know, that's always a question. If you have anything nearby that you can show us. Yes, um, and then, I think a big thing is also Brandon. I always say just not just for art, but anything you want to sell, especially um, there's something called that everyone, a lot of people have been selling t-shirts lately. And they sell, sometimes the t-shirt is just like a normal t-shirt with just like a little logo on it. And then they will sell for 50 bucks. And I was like, okay, so make it worth the 50 bucks. Let the brand, let the Brandon be everything that it says, okay, I am really buying, I'm, I'm buying a brand. It's not just putting it in a box. And so, that being said, I have um, I was able to recreate how the artwork is being sent. So I was created the design for it, put a, a little box oh. icon with the logo on it. Um, and so, yeah, like product design is very big for me. Well, thank you. Now I, I have to buy more just so I can get it packaged so nicely. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you and I appreciate everyone that's here this evening. Um, once again, you know, we are really trying to just showcase everyone um, that we know that is creative, that has something new and exciting going on, and really just a way to hear about, you know, your story um, and the stories of others. So thank you. This was fun for me, I'm sure. Um, others enjoyed it. And really thank you again for just being open and honest. Um, and just gave us a deep understanding. I know some of those questions you didn't want to answer, but I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Thank you for having me. Yes. yes. Um, for those that, like I said, this was your first time. Thank you for coming. Um, for those that have been here before, I love seeing familiar faces. Um, stay tuned. We definitely have other events coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, thank you to the UVA Office of Engagement and Michael for just giving us this platform 
to support all these amazing artists and especially the DC Who's and the DC Black alumni. Thank you all for all of your help and support for making tonight happen. Um, it was really, I think, a fun and great event for everyone. Um, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks, you too.